Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another My Thoughts Don't Matter episode number six. If you guys notice anything, my voice sounds a bit lower, maybe a bit raspier. I'm actually homesick right now. I thought, why not ruin my voice all the more and make some episodes for all of you? And this is an episode I'm very excited to announce, guys. The Stanislaw episode to give you guys all background information about Stanislaw, the current situation and problems he's going through, as well as to predict to all of you guys the team I think he'll be joining sometime soon in the future, and also knock off all those teams you guys think he might join. So as always, this is a very interactive series, guys. Please leave a comment down below what your thoughts are, because my thoughts don't matter but yours surely do so please make sure to leave a comment what you guys think about today's episode so first off to give you guys a quick background information to actually preface today's episode I do want to say not only historically speaking but also currently speaking Stanislaw is certainly a guaranteed top five North American IGL given his history with both optic and liquid he was a very very good player and I still think he can perform very well at, at a top North American team his number one problem right now though is there are no longer any top North American teams who are considering him as an option so I'll actually explain this and first again I want to preface this by saying his time with Liquid was very, very well spent. His eight to nine month stint there was done very well. We have ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals, ECS Season 5, uh, I think of Season 3 Finals shortly after that, as well as ESG, a tournament there. I really can't pronounce the name of that. They had a top four finish there. And to finish it off, another top four finish at ESL New York. This team was very solid with Stannis Law on their roster, although unfortunately enough, Steel from Immortals did replace him and they're looking just as solid. So first off, to knock off that number one option for the future of Stannis Law is Cloud9. By far and away your number one North American team. They certainly pulled away instantaneously after acquiring the former Optic members Rush and Tark. Of course, if you guys remember many months ago, this was the perfect fit for Stanislaw because, of course, they needed the IGL role desperately. They were trying to find any member on that team to take over the IGL role. No one besides Stewie2K would. Other members tried it out for a short amount of time, and eventually it fell on Stewie2K. And, of course, that chemistry was never really clicking fully or altogether for that team, which led to some major issues. Actually, some major issues trying to qualify for major so on and so forth. On top of that though, now that they've acquired Rush and Tarek in that IGL role, they've seemed to actually fix most of those issues. Although the memes of peanut brain will never stop, Cloud9 has pulled away statistically and performance wise the number one North American team. I don't think, especially with their major qualifier spot and the odds they probably will make the major, knock on wood. I don't think this team, this team will be considering a new ch IGL change as well as Stanislaw anytime near in the future because beyond that, Rush and Tark were also former teammates of Stanislaw. And if you guys remember back in early 2017, was Stanislaw pretty much screwed over Optic Gaming. They fell in a huge disarray when he left that roster without an IGL. That was actually coming off a really high point in 2016. Optic very much fell off once he left that team for Liquid. And of course, Rush and Tark were on that roster when he left. Uh, at least uh, Rush was as well. So kind of a disappointment there. I don't see those guys actually trying to convince Liquid, uh, I don't see those guys trying to convince Cloud9 owners in any way to actually re-sign Stannis Law, no matter how good he is, because of despite that history. Now on top of that as well, the number two North American option was of course his former team Liquid. They let him go for steel from Immortals, and they're doing decently with him. Of course, uh, shortly after they picked him up, they had a very, very good tournament there, where all you could see over the headlines was Steel being very, very happy to be there, and of course Liquid happy to have him. So I think, of course, right away, your number one problem here for Stannis Law is your top two North American teams do not need you, do not want you, and of course the fall off after that has now been immensely, uh, kind of you know, the gap has spread immensely over these past few weeks with some new knowledge we've actually come aware of. Now that new knowledge of course was uh, you actually consider of course your number three previously probably your number one North American team before they actually went back to European was of course Optic Gaming. Now they are a full European roster. That's probably no longer an option as well because I'm sure you guys are aware of the history there with Stanislaw and Optic Gaming. It actually goes back to 2016. Uh, originally they were actually going to kick the player Daps, then it was Stanislaw, then they reverted that kick of Stanislaw and eventually kicked Daps instead. Stanislaw remained on the team for a few more months before he ditched them for Liquid. I really don't think Hector and the team over there is going to welcome him back anytime soon, as well as the fact they're over in Europe now. I don't see him traveling that kind of distance for Optic Gaming in his future. Now, of course, beyond that though, your other teams in North America have fallen off. I mean, it's off the radar. It's, it's immense to see that Cloud9 and Liquid are your only two top 10 teams in the world from North America, maybe even top 15 if Liquid's out, outside the top 10 right now. And like I said previously, the, the, the list just falls off so immensely afterwards. Of course, we also got information uh, just recently here in the last few weeks that CLG has also left CSGO altogether. That was definitely the next option because when you think of top five North American teams, generally in the back towards your mouth, the back end of your tongue, comes out CLG. They're usually probably your fourth or fifth best North American team of all time. And due to financial reasons, they've succumbed to all that pressure and of course released all of their CSGO teams on the male side of things. They still have their female team, but you know, none, none, nonetheless, I don't think Stanislaw is transitioning anytime 
soon to ma make the CLG red roster, but that was definitely one of your other options out there. So again, I wasn't joking, guys. The fall off here is is immense when it comes to those uh, North American teams. When you go after Cloud9 and Liquid, now no longer Optic, no longer CLG. Really, the best other option you have right now currently is Misfits. Misfits has also made your major qualifier. People thinking that's definitely uh, you know an option for them because I think the only real option you have here, uh, definitely not one of my preferences, would have been Misfits. But currently they do have Sean Garris, one of the better known historically North American IGLs. But he was also recently had, you know talking about his marriage, so on and so forth. He's been married for quite some time, but he might be stepping away from the scene. No one really knows as of, as of when that was. You know we had Cloud 9s nothing step away kind of uh, erratically. So who knows if Sean Garris might take a step away, maybe go to the coaching role instead for that team. And Misfits could certainly pull in a guy like Stanislaw if they could afford him. And on top of that, of course, it doesn't hurt that they've also made the major qualifier some extra money in their pocket for the future as well. So that's certainly an option on the table. Definitely probably not my number one option for him in the future, but certainly on the list itself. Now, another team I want to knock out there that people are saying could also be an option was Team NRG. I actually was looking at this roster and thinking, yes, it's definitely an option for him. Of course, they just recently added the Bulgarian player Cirque, a very young player. They stole him away from uh, other teams out there. So he's one of the younger uh, members on that roster itself. And they could definitely base that roster around a new IGL. Then I remembered that Daps is also on that roster. Now, again, I'm not sure the history of these players specifically. I think not many people actually know the specifics, whether people actually hate each other when it comes to, you know, player, you know, when a player leaves because of another player, do they really hate that guy or do they understand? When it comes, though, to Stanislaw and Daps, you have to imagine there's some kind of conflict there because, of course, originally it was going to be Daps that was kicked, then, of course, Stanislaw, then it was reverted and back to Daps. You have to imagine there might be some kind of conflict there which would keep Stanislaw from going to Team uh, NRG because of that. And, of course, Daps is currently their IGL as well. So this leads me, though, to my final option for all of you guys, which I do think is certainly a very good option. And, again, not necessarily a North American option. I know uh, teams from the Oceanic region, I really don't know how to classify teams like Renegades because Renegades plays all over the place. I don't know whether to call them an Oceanic team, an Asian team, or an American team. Whatever you guys want to take from this, I do think right now the number one roster that he could become a part of could be Team Renegades. Now, let me hear you. Let me hear me out, guys. Like I said before, a lot of his former teammates, of course, could have conflict with this guy, but we're not necessarily sure about that. Now, one of his former teammates has made a name for himself. Of course, he formerly did so on, on Optic Gaming, and that is Nafly himself. Nafly has actually taken over this team, Renegades, made sure they made the major qualifier. Now, on top of this as well, for teams who maybe not can actually afford Stanislaw, of course, Renegades has a very good spot in major qualifiers. It, you'd almost say for every major qualifier, they have a very good chance for qualifying, and Nafly has almost rebounded that team and, immensely. We've actually seen a lot of fans pop up. Of course, Sponge being a very well-known analyst, a former Renegade member himself, this team has actually caught a wave of fans uh, around them. I think that Stanislaw could definitely, you know, of course he could hurt that image, but I he does have a very a good fan following from Optic Gaming as well as Liquid. Might not be the most positive fans in the world. Of course, the memes of Snake is Law and so on and so forth, but he does have a following to bring to that team. And of course, uh, Nifty is currently their IGL. He's very, very, uh, not very, very young, but a younger IGL who's also trying to op on that roster, kind of be a younger fallen on the Renegades team. To give you guys a little bit of a, a feel out moment here, of course, I'm not going to name any names as to who Renegades could replace, but if you were to replace Nifty for the IGL role, Nifty could do a full time op, not try and do both. Uh, of course, that could, of course, enhance his skills uh, in itself. He actually formerly replaced Jay-Z Watkins and definitely did so in a great manner when it came to opping. So if you let Nifty take over the full-time opping role and of course add in a new IGL, of course it could be AZR or Steo, who, whoever you replace on that roster itself. Renegades could do a lot of things with this roster in the future and they even could go to North American majority. Now of course that might not be the way to go with this team doing so well major qualifier wise because they're not technically North American. I think they want to stay a majority Australian team that they currently are but you never really know what's going to happen with the roster in the future and I think this could be an option for him as well. So yeah, I think I, I think I might have convinced myself. Renegades, Renegades Stanislaw sounds sounds kind of nice, right? I think honestly though if I were to, to rank these I, I really do think uh, either RNG, Renegades, or NRG uh, of course have good shots at signing this guy sometime in the future if he were to actually bounce those teams and those players would have no conflicts but alongside this I could be wrong. It could be a misfit and it could be a European team out there. There are many European teams who are very closely colliding not only in ESL standings, but as as well as just you know, very very inconsistent. I can name a bunch of teams right now that are very inconsistent European wise that are still much better than North America, who would love to have an IGL at that North American price, especially because well then then again you have to think about maybe they pay him more to come overseas, but who knows? There are a long list of I would say more so Danish teams or any European teams who would love to have an IGL like this. It then comes the question: Will Stanislaw be willing to travel and actually cooperate with some of the guys he's never played with before? You know, it's kind of funny to see of all the teams I named off. 
you know, of all the teams from Cloud9, Liquid, Optic, CLG, Misfits, uh, RNG, and NRG, you know, half those teams had players that he's formerly played with. But if you go over to the European side of things, he hasn't played with pretty much any of those guys. So it'd be very, very cool to see, though, if a European team would love to sign him. And I think he's still definitely one of your better IGLs out there. And I think he is a very, very desirable treasure right now, especially in the North American scene, but overall as well. I think it's going to be less than six months, at, you know, at the very, very most. Stanislaw will be signed again. He will continue to play CSGO. The question, though, is for who? So hope you guys all enjoyed. Leave a comment down below what you guys think or what team do you guys think Stanislaw can join. Do you guys like Stanislaw? If you guys do, leave a comment why. If you guys don't, Leave a comment why. All you Optic fans out there, stand up strong, you know? Uh, I, I definitely thought I was a very hardcore Optic fan at the time he left, so I was very upset by that, but I'm, I'm certainly over it by now. But also very, very thankful for all of you guys who are also Patreons of the show. Thanks to God Doctor, Paflo, as well as Chris Scott. I seriously do appreciate the Patreons of the show, guys, and that Patreon link is always down below. So uh, uh, that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. I'm going to go take some NyQuil and go to bed. So hope you all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake Murray. I like you. And uh, if you guys did enjoy, also, very, very importantly, if you guys want me to make an episode about a certain topic, just leave a comment down below and say, my thoughts don't matter with a dash and then leave your topic next to that and I'll look into some topics you guys want me to talk about. So, um, all right, bye.